Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor, and welcome back to a Linux Second Impressions. Today we are looking at OpenSUSE 13.2. Now SUSE has a close affection to me in regards to the fact that it is one of the most stable versions that I had used prior to Gen 2. I used it for many years back in the early 2000, 2001, 2002, up until about 2004, I think it was. And I still used it as a server for a few years after that. I had migrated, of course, in 2002, 2003 to mostly using Gen 2 on my desktop. But SUSE was always a very easy, very well-secured flavor of Linux to use as my server. And even though it was a headless server and I didn't really have a desktop environment that I used more than SSH, uh, it still was there in my systems for a very long time until I decided that because I didn't need the GUI interface that Gen 2 may be a little bit better as a headless version of Linux to use. However, SUSE has been around for a while and it is one of the few that I will say and admit that I have paid for the early releases and I say early releases and I think I got involved with SUSE back in version 7, 8, 9, 10 time frame. It was shortly after uh, their merger with Novell that I ended my ties with SUSE. I really don't like the idea of large corporations coming in and purchasing open source software. And it's it, you know there's the good and the bad with it, and I can talk about both. You know, on one hand, it's great that a corporation has put their money and their backing into a Linux distribution. I think a lot of companies are very nervous about using Linux if they're not familiar enough with the product and by having a large corporation like Novell backing the Linux product it can help make that transition a little bit less stressful allowing the corporation or business to know that there is some support other than just some group of people creating an OS you know that it's going to be around for a while because Novell is not going anywhere and that really does help bolster the use and whites and, and spreading of the Linux operating system. However, I would like to talk about my experience with 13.2. The installation was quite simple. I had to re-download it, I think, once or twice because the first time I went through, it didn't fully properly download the ISO. I didn't notice that until after I was trying to install it and it kept failing and then I realized hey let's check to see what our hash was on it and it didn't match. So I had to re-download it again and finally got the right flavor. I also attempted to do a internet install of it so that I could just use a small ISO and that still didn't work for me because I had immediate problems with my wireless drivers. However, once I got the full DVD of it, which I put on a USB stick and then installed, I had no issues. I also have to admit that my first impressions of the look and feel of OpenSUSE 13.2 really had me unimpressed. The default desktop, the color scheme that they chose, all those things were so blah. And while as a typical geek, I am more about function over fashion, I'm not about making things look pretty as much as I would rather make sure that they work, it just really disappointed me when I installed this new version of OpenSUSE 13.2. Immediately, of course, I went out and said, let's find some good wallpaper instead of what it came with. And I found this, and I love this picture of OpenSUSE. I really like the way it, it looks and, and everything else. 
I, of course, had to change the color schemes. I like a darker look and feel, as you can see. The grays, the blacks, etc. Just complement the OS so much better than what they had defaulted to, which, like I said, I didn't care. Of course, I also changed this from the standard to Lancelot because I very much like the Lancelot look and feel for my main menu here. The other thing that I noticed once I had installed OpenSUSE was that I was trying to set up some of the default apps that I enjoy to use, making sure I could get Simple Screen Recorder, Chromium, GUVC View, and a few other software set up, and I was running into all kinds of problems. I don't think you know what's the matter here. I don't have this kind of issue with Debian or or even some of the other more common distributions out there that I will not name. <laughs> but I was having a terrible time with OpenSUSE. In fact, it was starting to give me some remindings or reminiscences of the few times that I have tried Red Hat, where my biggest complaint with Red Hat, even 15, 20 years ago, uh, maybe 20 years was too far back, but in the late 90s and so forth, when I was trying out different things, uh, Red Hat was one of those, and it seemed like you would it would not only would it take forever to install Red Hat, but afterwards you'd have to download about a gig of applications just to make the pro just to make the operating system usable. And I was starting to feel like, what's going on here? Why doesn't any why can't I get this to just where is it? You know, ramble, ramble, ramble. And then, after doing some research, I found that Pac-Man was my friend. And then I remembered, oh yeah, Susu was starting to get to that point where I was having, back with the 10.x days, having to go to Pac-Man for a lot of things. And I'm not talking about Pac-Man the installation software, but Pac-Man the web repository for packages and alternate packages for SUSE. I had to add them as a repository using YAST, which YAST is yet another setup tool. Uh, it's the control panel that OpenSUSE uses. And once I had set up Pac-Man in the repositories for software, suddenly the world was opened up and I had everything that I needed and desired in an operating system once again available to me. And I was able to get GUVC View, Simple Screen Recorder, and a few others that I really wanted. That disappoints me that the repositories have become so skimpy in that regard. And mm, you can call it protecting yourself under certain codec issues and whatnot, but I just call it making your operating system a little less friendly and usable. I suppose for legal reasons though I can understand but it's nice to know that there are repositories such as Pac-Man to help you out and make things better. <laughs> so those were the complaints that I had first starting with OpenSUSE. Now I will say it's still very stable, it's still very good. I'm a little disappointed in the screen frames per second that I'm getting with my webcam. I'm not sure what changed. I know I have had a couple updates over the last week and a half or so that I've been testing this and somewhere along the lines my frame rates kind of dropped here where I'm lucky if I'm getting between 7 and 10 which is about half of what I was getting before. I'm not sure if it was an FFmpeg update or what it was. If I move too fast as you can see I get really blurry and that is a little bit of a nuisance, but I can live with it for now if you can live with it because a couple days this operating system will be gone and I'll be looking for another. Now in regards to that, I have been very busy with work and last week here in America it was the Thanksgiving week holiday and my family always goes up in the mountains and camps for Thanksgiving, so I was out and about. If you remember 
last year when I was doing my 52 weeks of distributions I actually had done a video and had it all set up so all I had to do was find some sort of network connectivity up the mountains and be able to activate it and get it going so I could meet my 52 distros in 52 weeks and I did that but this year I've been slacking off a bit and I'm sorry but I've got so much going on and this week I'm gonna be on the road most of the rest of the week uh, by the time you guys probably see this, I'll have been to El Paso, Texas and back. That's a long drive, but it looks like I'll be going a couple states across to take care of some IT issues over there. Our uh, company has really uh, tightened its belt on employment, and not only do I have to sometimes travel to Utah, but now it looks like I will be covering some spots in New Mexico and Texas along with being the only IT technician for the state here in Arizona so there's a lot that I now have to really work with and cover there are days when I don't even have time to even think about Linux because work is so busy but that's enough about my personal stuff OpenSUSE is still a great OS to work with. Let me show you a little bit too about Yast because it is a little bit different. But if you just search on Yast and pull it up, you can get to the control center. And they have done a great job of making it so it's very easy to find out about setting up, you know, checking your media, doing online updates software management for installing and removing software your software repositories where I had to add Pac-Man working with your hardware and network devices they have made it very simple to set up network shares and to do anything with the network services firewalls etc it's all been built in and well maintained with Yast and their control things now the applications are quite common the ones you're used to always saying Firefox is a choice browser of OpenSUSE I did install Chromium web browser because I do like that a lot better than Firefox recently and it's one of those things where you know one gets above and better than the other and then, then the other one does and you bounce back and forth and you use what's best for you of course it comes with full LibreOffice suite and plenty of online help if you see right here there's an icon that they've put on there I added of course the video player chromium simple screen recorder the rest of these here came with here came with the OS excuse me uh, K info center tells you all about your hardware what's available what it's using to run it and and, and that brings me to another topic I had some situations within the last couple of weeks maybe month about people asking me to assist them with some of their gen 2 install and some of the problems that they were having with some of the drivers and kernel configurations etc and I was trying to help out and and, and finally when things just weren't working and I, I'm better at being able to look at a problem and be able to you okay I think I figured out the situation. Let's try this, this, and this. It's much harder when that person with the issue is halfway across the world, different country, different language. Uh, but ultimately, I want to share this with you, and I'm going to put this in this video. When you're working with one operating system, especially with Linux, and you have something working perfectly, you should be able to save the configurations files look at the way the kernel is built see what they've enabled and disabled etc and then when you go back into something like Gen 2 and you're not quite sure how a certain setup should be done use the example of a working Linux distribution that runs fine for you to find that solution uh, for instance if you look at the KInfo Center and you find that the SD card reader for your computer is using this driver package 
then make sure in Gen 2, for instance, that you have set that driver package up, and then also look to see what the dependencies of that driver is and go ahead and set it up. One thing I found out, for instance, with my new laptop is that I can no longer build the sound card into the kernel, but I have to set it all up as modules that I can then put in and, and install separately after the systems boot up and that has to do with the fact that it's using some beats audio stuff and has messed up the whole input output of the speakers and if I would put it into the kernel like I'm used to doing because my, my philosophy in the past has always been if the hardware is built into the computer build it into your kernel if the hardware is something you add, remove, can take away, not is not always there, such as a say a joystick driver or something like that, build it as a module and not into the kernel. But in this situation, I learned that I needed to set all that up as modules instead of in kernel options. When you're in doubt and you don't know how something works, check something that's really good and stable like OpenSUSE. Boot it up with the disk or DVD. See what they've done to make things work inside of your hardware and then use that to emulate the same thing within your Gen 2 environment and that will help you out a great deal. Just a little tidbit that I'd like to share because that's what I've done in the past. If I, for instance, am having a problem with how an NFS share is working properly, I'll see how something like OpenSUSE set it up once I went through their GUI interface and I look at then you know the, the configuration files that it created and then I will emulate that same configuration sequence within Gen2 and most of the time it resolves errors or it points me to what I may be missing within Gen2. You know the thing about Gen2 is it doesn't always give you everything you need up front you install one thing but you don't realize that you really should have installed all these dependencies not really dependencies for that package but we'll call them add-ons and you might need some extra packages that it doesn't need to run but if you want to set it up proper you should have installed those as well kind of like when you install XFCE from Gen2 and then you find out later why is it so bare why does it look like it's just Blah. And then you realize, oh, you got to install all these other packages that give you all the cool toys so that you can use it with a lot more fun. Anyway, I've got a nap driving me crazy right here. <laughs> anyway, that's just my two cents and my little bit of a tidbit for OpenSUSE and uh, using things like this to assist you with Gen 2. If it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing with me during these hard times. It is the holiday season. I do hope wherever you're at in the world that you have joyous holidays and that everything goes well. I will still have more videos before the end of the year. But thank you and have a great one. Bye, guys.